Hello, Mike here again from Scratch, and today we are looking at something that is at once incredibly awesome and, on the other hand, kind of basically useless, at least for now, and that is Godot Online. Now, what the heck is Godot Online? Well, essentially, it is the Godot game engine running in your web browser, and yeah, it really is exactly that. Let's check it out. Now, first off, you go to www.godot.online. Um, and it brings you to this very unassuming page. And you have an option of running a WASM version or not WASM. Now, if you're wondering, WASM is a version of assembly that runs in the web browser. It's, the consortiums are all behind it. Basically, it's gonna give you the ability to, to compile machine code speed level code that will run in the browser. If your browser doesn't support it, however, there is a non-WASM version. On the topic of browsers, I've tried this in four different web browsers. I tried it on my iPad and Safari, it did not work. I tried it on Microsoft Edge, it did not work. And then I tried it on uh, Chrome and Firefox and both of those did work. And actually there's a fifth browser, I tried it on Android on my phone and it actually built in stock browser, it worked as well. So um, you do need to have WebGL 2.0 support um, and that's about it. So when you're ready to go, just come on in here, click that link and it'll bring you to this guy. Now there is a bit of a startup uh, process here and I'm not gonna keep talking during the entire thing uh, because basically it takes a little bit of time sometimes. Actually, since I've already run it, it appears it's gonna be quite a bit faster. So there we are. And look at that. That is, honest to God, the Godot game engine inside of Chrome. Uh, it's, it's staggering the world we live in these days. So here you see pretty much everything that you, if, you know, if you've never used Godot before, I've got all kinds of videos introducing you to Godot. This is not that video. Uh, so I assume you've already seen Godot, but this is full-blown Godot. You can switch between 2D mode, 3D mode. The asset library isn't, um, isn't working, it's, the connection doesn't work for some reason. Uh, but you've got the two options. We'll hit switch over here to 2D mode. I will show you over here. I'm gonna go ahead and create. You see here, it's even filtering down as I type. I'll make a sprite node here. Um, I can right click. The right click menus are all available. Once again, I am running in my browser. We've got all of your menus available over here. Uh, go into the settings and all of the sub menus are available. <laughs> it's staggering that this even works. So here we are with our sprite. And I'll go ahead and I will load a texture. And here's where we're gonna start getting into where this becomes kind of actually technically useless. Uh, I'll use the default Godot icon. Here you see it. Drag that guy around on screen. Even your performance is pretty solid. We can uh, zoom in, a little over zoomed. And we can take this guy and we can attach a script to it. We could do a normal uh, visual script or we could do a Godot script, no mono script on this particular version. But attach a script, so we do have our 2D option, our two different options. We also have native script, but I have a feeling it would not work in this particular environment. Uh, but you have your full visual script editor if you decide to go that way. I'll stick with GD script just for this demonstration. And there you go. And you got your full on editor here. So if we wanted to do something in our uh, here, so like git underscore node sprite. Uh, I think it's move local x. One, there you go. We just scripted inside of Godot running in a browser. It's it's the coolest thing I have ever seen. Although here's where we fall apart a bit. You got no ability to drag and drop in files. So effectively for a realistic game, this is never gonna work. The other thing I've kind of found, so let's say I wanna go ahead and run my code now. Same deal as before, you gotta go ahead and save it. Sprite.tse, let's go ahead and save that guy. And then we start running into problems. So you see here, condition process ID is true, return error can't fork. So there's something wrong with it launching projects. So it's not perfect yet. Some of it might be tied to the file system because obviously you're running this server side and who knows where these files are actually residing. Um, some of it might be that you know the, the, the bug portion of it simply doesn't work. But otherwise, this is honest to God, full blown Godot running in your web browser. It's such a cool thing. Uh, the other major problem I found is I can't find any way to actually add a file to the world. If you drag and drop a file in here, it doesn't work. It basically just uh, opens that file in your browser. So there's no drag and drop support as of yet, and there's no ability to upload files that I can find as of yet. Uh, but really, that's a solvable problem. That's one of those areas where they're going to have to fork away from normal Godot and implement, you know, browser-specific functionality if this is ever to be anything more than a toy. But 
<laughs> this is awesome. And realistically, this came out of nowhere. I only know about this because the creator of Godot himself just discovered it and tweeted about it today. And I'm equally astonished. This is just so awesome that it exists. And really, that's all we're going to talk about today. If you know Godot, this is Godot in a browser. There's nothing really new here other than the fact that, awesomely enough, this is running in a browser. But what you may be um, wondering at this point is if you're not familiar with the web backside of things is how the hell did anyone pull this off? And that's a really cool question. And we'll get into that really quickly with a top level, very generic answer of that. And essentially what they most likely used, I don't know. There's, n I have no more information on this project than this page. I have no idea where it came from. I have no idea who's maintaining it, what the goals are for it, nothing. I just know that it exists and that you can start it by clicking this link. But, which by the way, I will include down below in the comments, but I can realistically guess the way that it was done was using a product called Mscripten. Now, if you've got C++ code that has relatively well-defined dependencies, like we do in Godot's case, so it depends on very popular open source libraries or OpenGL, WebGL for its rendering, etc. and you've written very portable code, what you can often do is recompile that code to JavaScript, and that's exactly what Inscripten does. Well, sort of. What Inscripten does is it compiles um, LLVM to JavaScript. Now, LLVM is sort of can be thought of as an intermediary language. You could compile a whole bunch of different um, programming languages to LLVM, um, such as C++, C Sharp, uh, OpenGL shader languages, uh, Java bytecode, Lua code, Objective-C, you name it. In fact, LLVM is the technology that the majority of Xcode and uh, Apple's development stack is built around. Um, so LLVM can be thought of as kind of a intermediary layer between those languages and bytecode. So what you can do in this case is compile from any of those languages to LLVM using the LLVM tool chain, um, at which point, instead of going to bytecode, LLVM object code is being compiled into uh, either JavaScript or WebAssembly. Now, WebAssembly is just an optimized version of JavaScript that is more like assembly language. It's very performance-based for doing um, very performant, okay, I'm being a little redundant there, code in your browser. The various different web browsers are all coming around to support uh, WebAssembly as a standard. So if you need to compile fast, um, browser-based code, WebAssembly seems to be the future of that. Now, keep in mind, WebAssembly is not like HTML or JavaScript. It is not human readable, uh, but that's exactly what you can do here. So basically, you can compile it down to, um, I imagine it's JS.ASM, which is basically just a version of, J or ASM.js code, which is a version of really streamlined, but still JavaScript code um, that is optimized to run in the browser as quick as possible, or you can go that one step further and compile it down to WebAssembly, which is what these two options are granting you. But Ultimately, the technology being used behind the scenes, the magic here is um, the technology I'm scripting. Um, it's not the easiest thing in the world to get up and running, but once it's running, it, it feels a lot like just running GCC from the command line. And the biggest thing really is going to be resolving you know, your project properties, configurations, etc. And someone has done exactly that. And thanks to them, we have a version of the Godot game engine running in a web browser, which is just cool, cool, awesome stuff. And I don't know going forward if this is going to be anything more than a toy, but I thought it was cool enough that I would share it here. This is, it's just, I don't know, this kind of stuff, this is why I love technology. So seeing something like this just brings a smile to my face, and I figured I'd share it with the rest of you. And then behind the scenes, this is also a great example of what this um, M scripting technology is all about, and then ultimately what things like WebAssembly are all about. And I'm not sure if you guys are interested in me covering M scripting or WebAssembly in a bit more detail, but do let me know in the comments down below. And really, that's all we're going to really deal with today. That is uh, Go Online, um, a project fork of Godot running in the web browser, which is just it's just so cool. All right, uh, that's it for now. Hope you found that as as cool as I did. Um, Feel free to play around with it. Again, I will throw the link down below, but it is godot.online in your web browser. Make sure that you have WebGL 2 capabilities and you know that basically uh, on top of that, as far as my tests go, this guy will run in um, uh, sorry, uh, Firefox and Chrome, uh, but all the other browsers I tried did not work. So uh, try with one of those two first. It's just... It's just awesome. And if you like that, please do click like. And if you're into all kinds of game development stuff, of course, if you're not already subscribed, maybe consider doing so because I, I like to think this is a cool channel. Uh, anyways, uh, going back to your weekend. Hope you enjoyed that. See you all later. Goodbye.